to do it over the over the intro right now. All right, uh, Caleb's gonna go ahead and sing a song here to start no, the I'm show not. off. Okay, no, that's I'm not. not gonna happen. I might bring a kazoo next time. <laughs> that would be great. I think we need an intro song. I think the Whiskey Mist is the man to do. I could do that. All right, I'll we'll bring it on that. We'll next week. Happen. Hello, everyone. This is Digital Trends Live, our live show that we do five days a week here at Digital Trends, live every day, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, and we are broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and Twitch, which means we can take your comments and questions. Of course, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and we've got a hell of a lineup for you today. I'm just going to say it. It is a stacked show today. I'm ready to do it. So let me tell you this. Here in just a little bit, we're going to be heading over to the Digital Trends kitchen. We're leaving the studio. We're going to go over to our giant kitchen that we have here at Digital Trends. We're going to be talking to executive chef Patrick McKee of Perlo, who's going to be talking about actually walking us through a dish that he's going to be making live here on camera today. So we can take your comments and questions as we go through that. We've got Franco Brockelman of Relief App. So it's, the app is called Relief. It's an app to to actually help people determine what kind of marijuana uh, will help them, especially for medicinal purposes. Yes, especially. It, especially for medicinal, for medicinal purposes. purposes. I'm sure it's only used for medicinal purposes. Very important. And then we've got uh, Oi Long Maui of Digital Trends here, our affiliate team, to talk about Black Friday. Black Friday, two days, all the savings, all the sales going on. All the yummy tech that you want. All of the amazing stuff that you guys have been working so hard at getting so much put together. Ridiculous right now. There <laughs> is a lot. And uh, before, though, we get to any of that, we need to talk about our tech headlines and introduce ourselves. I'm Greg Nibbler, and here joining me today is Caleb the Whiskey Dennison, Mist. AKA the Whiskey Mist. We still need to get your third, your title down there on the uh, That's fine. lower third. We're working on it. We're yeah. working on it. We're Whiskey developing mist. things. You know, yeah. we need a little logo to go with that. Right, yeah. The, oh, I'm sorry about the branding issues. You're right. Yeah. We probably should have okay. brought that up on the little show. A little glass of whiskey with some wisps. Yes, the patent. Wisps yeah, the patented. <laughs> whiskey mist, everybody. All right. <laughs> let's, I know we're on limited time here, so let's let's start talking about some uh, some headline news. Okay. You know, let's get to that. So the trending story, and this is kind of what we do every day. We take a look at what's trending, what the big stories are. This one right now is the new rumors about the Samsung Galaxy S10. Samsung rumors are, are, I feel like there's a new one like every three days yep. that'll happen. You know, we had the foldable foam. This is not the foldable foam, but an article came out at the Wall Street Journal claiming an inside source that the new S10 may be coming out in February and uh, Samsung wants to make a big, a big splash with this to try to compete with uh, iPhone, for, with the Apple iPhone for the, the iPhone 10 that came out. Yep. So what they're talking about is that this thing could have not one, not two, not three. Six cameras. Get out six of town. Six cameras, cameras. One phone right there. <sighs> That's the rumor. Six it. cameras in one phone. Um, Are we jumping the shark with the phones right now? Yeah. Like, I mean, how many cameras do you I need? really feel like that's part of the problem, is that they've taken the display to new places. They're folding the phone now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. Uh, what, Folding my dang phones. What else yeah. can you stick in there? And what amazes me is like the more you'd think, the more cameras you stick in the phone, the bigger the phone's going to get. But that's not really what's happening. Right. They well, stay, they stay thin, relatively thin. They are saying this one could be up to a 6.7 inch display. Yeah. So that display wise, but yeah, display as as wise, it's down. it's nice. But in terms of the thickness of the phone, I mean, you know, you'd figure you'd need extra yeah. space to fit. But what? Why do we need so many cameras? That's a lot of cameras. Yeah. That's that's at part some of what point, don't you want to just carry around? A camera. Yeah, just then. If are, is this what we're going to happen? About photography, it's going to go retro back to that where we're actually just getting actual cameras back. Right, because at the end of the day, like the the image quality is going to be limited by the the sensor size. You know, the yeah. quality of the sensor itself. Like you can stick as many stinking lenses in there as you want. You can do all of this uh, back end processing, which is what Google likes to do with the Pixel. Right. But I think that um, you know you can only take it so far. I mean, it's cool, whatever. Samsung needs to sell a phone. They've got the 10, it's a big one. Might as well have a whole bunch of cameras in it, I guess. Yeah, and, and part of what they're saying it could happen, so I'm taking a look here at part of the report from the Wall Street Journal. So yeah, 6.7 inch display, um, six cameras, potentially released in February. So it sounds like it'll be around for uh, Mobile World Congress. Yep. Is when it actually come out. It means we we'll, might get a look out of it maybe at CES. Um, and then on top of that, so the, with the cameras, at least the camera side of it, we're going to get into the 5G side here in a second, but with the camera side, they're saying it could have a bunch of uh, uh, AR functions mm -hmm. as part of the new camera. That would Which make is the only reason I can think that you would need six. I don't Four think... Four rear-facing cameras, two on the front. That's... 
That's a lot of cameras. I still don't understand why you would need four. You only really need two for your picture taking, then slap another one on there for AR, right? Right, or yeah. Ma or maybe they want to judge an incredible amount of depth of field, and the only way they can do that yeah. without a mechanical lens is just to have more lenses. Well, taking a look here in the chat, uh, I've seen Keelan comment, this is on Facebook, again, we're live, so drop your comments in there, said there are more cameras because a single lens can't replicate the human eye, and the ultimate goal of photography is to replicate what the human eye can see one day. Yeah, I mean, that's true, but you could do that with two cameras. Yeah. Maybe even three. Yeah. So I think this really is Six about Six is the, just kind of overdoing it. I think it. this really is about the AR. Well, um, another, another comment here coming through talking about the 5G side of it. So 5G, obviously, the trend in cell service, although I still think we're kind of jumping the gun. Our uh, editor-in-chief, Jeremy Kaplan, did kind of a piece on that for his Hear Me Out segment here on, on Digital Trends Live a couple of weeks ago. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, 5G, everybody's talking about going to 5G. T-Mobile says they're going to have 5G next year. I don't necessarily believe that. How do you feel about that? 5G is super complicated. Yeah, like we just, it. I mean, it's easy to just say, well, 5G is one more than 4G. So right. It's, better, right? Because it's five instead of four. It's a lot more complicated. It's six cameras instead the of five. The way 5G works is that it's going to be amalgamation of all these newly released uh, bandwidths. So mm -hmm. all those analog TV stations that you don't get anymore, remember when those went away and we yeah. all had digital and if you had an old TV you had to have a new box added yep. to it. Those are the bands that are going to be used for 5G service, right? Okay. The thing is those particular uh, radio frequencies are not good at piercing things like walls and trees. <laughs> right. They are really short range. They don't go around corners very well. Um, so the idea with 5G is that they're going to install tons, tons of tiny little hotspots everywhere. Now, they're not going to be big and obvious, but they're going to work with existing t cell towers. And then um, they'll, they'll start putting more antennas on telephone poles. And then they're going to start mounting them on the side of buildings. To do that is going to take a long time. Ultimately, 5G will be here, it'll be a reality, and it'll be excellent, but to outfit the nation with 5G is a massive project. Just and the infrastructure. Super, the infrastructure on it, it's not a sexy word, but it's, it's true. Ultimately, what 5G brings us is instant connectivity anywhere with any device. So all your Internet of Things devices are talking together in real time. In fact, the only way autonomous vehicles are going to work is if there's a really good 5G backbone going on. So uh, we need to have that happen. It's going mean, to be there for autonomous vehicle safety and a ton of other things. It's not just about picking up your phone and downloading a 4K video in 22 seconds. You right. know, That's like a fringe benefit. Um, as for what is real 5G, I guess we're going to have to find out when T-Mobile unveils their... Yeah, their network. I mean, and Verizon and AT&T are talking about smaller hubs of 5G in certain cities, which that I could see actually happening a lot sooner than yeah. a nationwide 5G network, because like you said, the infrastructure for it will take, it takes time to build that. But the phones are coming out, whether they're going to be capable for 5G. I think if every manufacturer virtually at this point has said they're going to have a 5G phone out, like their next they're model. playing They're playing on a technicality with the 5G specification, which says that 5G is a whole bunch of things, you know? Yeah. And if you have this small slice of 5G, then you can go ahead and call it 5G. I just want people to know that like, this is what we're gonna get next year is not the 5G of the future. It's gonna take years to get there. And when we do, it's gonna be amazing. But, um, but yeah, right now I feel like it's a kind of a buzzword that carriers are using to, to pull in more customers and make themselves look really good. I'm a T-Mobile customer. I'm a T-Mobile fan. I dig them. I actually you am know, too. I choose their service for a number of different reasons, but them having the first 5G mm -hmm. uh, network uh, is not one of them. Right. Just because I'm not it's, it's not going to happen. Yeah, we don't think that's but You know what? Happen. If your phone gets better, you know, if you have better reception and you mm -hmm. get faster uh, data through that, then, you know, I'm all for it. It's fine. Uh, Suzanne asks, will it be here before global Wi-Fi from Elon Musk's zillion satellites? Yes, I think so, because Elon Musk has, I think, six years to get 50% up. I could be wrong on that. A certain number of years to get 50% of his 12,000 satellites up mm -hmm. for global internet. And again, we'll see if that happens. He has approval for it. Um, There's approval for a massive amount of space trash to be yeah. launched around our planet. Well, part of it is he has to have a plan, and this is going on just on a quick tangent, we need to get back <laughs> on track, but uh, he does have to have a plan as part of it to recover 
the satellites. Right. So yeah. To clean it up. You can't, you can't just, just leave dump them out there. Twelve thousand satellites and be like, eh, never mind. Because we've been do. doing that for years. You know. Right. We have like this ring of space trash around the uh, the planet, and it's not good. And I don't think Elon Musk really wants to contribute to that. So. I'm glad there's a plan in yeah. place. But well, again, there we I, di go. I digress. The news, the Samsung S10, you can check that out at digitaltrends.com. Let's get to our read them and weep segment that we do here My every favorite. day where we take a look at the comments that you have left on our different articles and shows over the last 24 hours or so. Let's take a look at some of them. We've, we've picked out a few here that we've got. Uh, let me pull them up. I myself actually have not seen these. So let's take a look here. Chris Newrock, uh, regarding everything you need to know about Apple Black Friday deals, which we do have a ton of deals, uh, and we're going to be talking to Oilong about those later on on today's Digital Trends Live edition. Um, and it says, but when you buy a MacBook at full price, they will give you an Apple sticker. So Aww, how cute. The Apple sticker. I don't know if you get that. With I don't know how many people are going to get really great deals from Apple itself, but... I can say that I have seen some incredible deals on the iPhone 6 and the iPhone SE. Yeah, and they're partnering like with uh, under Amazon, right? Under 100 bucks. Yeah. Uh, at more than just Amazon. Okay. Keep so. your eyes on Walmart, Target, and Best Buy. Um, if you need a, an inexpensive iPhone, like under 100 bucks, there's going to be some there. That's actually pretty amazing. So. Uh, yeah. So there, Apple's not huge on, on doing big discounts and deals, but with some of the older products, you know, that aren't as relevant as they were, they're not as cutting edge yeah. as they once were. Um, those are going to come out at ridiculous discounts. There's some great iPads out there, too. All right. Well, those are all deals <laughs> for Black Friday. So, Chris, um, I don't know about the Apple sticker, but you can get a good deal. So let's take a look at the next one here. We've got... This coming from Reggie regarding Digital Trends Deluxe. Deluxe, new Leica compact camera adds quality and luxury. The comment is, if I don't have this one by Christmas night, I'll buy it myself. Ooh, excited not, about that camera. I actually haven't seen the review on this camera. I haven't either, uh, but I do know that Leica has been putting out some really great stuff lately, yeah. and I am interested in checking that out. So I can't see all the things, Greg. Like, yeah, I know. I, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes on. I mean, that's the great thing about digital trends. We're gearing up for Black Friday right now. Yeah. So we're we're doing a lot to show some great deals out there. And I've been missing all the new tech that's been coming out. Got to catch up. Me. You got to catch up. It's still at digital trends. I it can is. still check it out. It'll always be there. All right, Marty Sheehan uh, is our next comment. Marty says, "Would you swap your key card for a microchip implant?" And uh, that is actually a big issue that's going on. That, that subject came up a couple of times here on the show already this week. Yeah. Uh, where Adrian said she would, Adrian Warner, I'm just going to remind everybody, Adrian Warner of Digital Trends said she would get a chip implant live on this show. Hot Nozzle stepping up. Hot Nozzle's going to do it. So I'm not going to let her forget about that. Drew Prindle already did it. He did. He uh, did. So, I mean, I think it's DT time we guys. the entire company. Yeah, uh, no. We all, we all need to get the chips. Ah, these aren't on, even, these aren't the even real doctors. Get the chip, dude. No, not real doctors come in with a gigantic syringe and like... Drew's going to be the one implanting it, too. So. Real? No. Yeah. Are you what, serious? Well, yeah, I oh, just made I, that up, but if you say it enough, it'll happen. <laughs> you know uh, what? Yeah, let's just will it into being. Marty said, don't accept the mark of the beast. Yep, I can understand that. It's... But at the same time, shouldn't you just embrace the technology? Um, this happen. is one I'm not so, I don't know. I, I love the magic. Like when Drew steps in an elevator and just goes boop, yeah. and he's like authorized to come to the floor. Right. That's like pretty part cool. Robot. If I'm at McDonald's and I want to pay for my Happy Meal. Wait, you boop. want it just for McDonald's? Yeah, <laughs> uh, just for the McRib. Uh, the only time <laughs> so I'll you ever walk in, it's it. like being, oh, McRib yeah. again, Caleb. McRib, <laughs> yes, Welcome exactly. back. I don't even have to talk to anybody. I just walk in and I get McRib. <laughs> they just and hand I walk you a out. McRib. I think that's a robot arm for that. Out for that, I would go ahead and accept the mark of the beast. I think. That's one more down. Maybe so the McRib more. itself is the mark of the beast. What do you think? Oh boy, that, now we're getting really deep on this. That's yeah, old. that's for DT I'm after sorry. dark. I tend to get, get into into philosophical those, this those early things. In the morning. Last comment we have from DJ regarding the Samsung Q nine hundred eight K TV oh, review. Oh, I know about uh -oh. that one. That, I wonder who did that review. This one's coming at me. I'm I'm ready for it. Hit me. It says this is nothing. My one twenty four K TV shipped out yesterday. So that was one of the one of the other comments. My oh yes, I see. He he was stuff. making funny with the numbers, like he added like a, a little a, a hundred and twenty to the four K. Yeah, a little bit of a dig on there. Yeah, not on me so much, just on the on the TV itself. All right, let's uh, yes, there it is. So that's one hundred twenty four K TV. I know. Uh, I think we're probably running out of time because we do need to get over into the kitchen here in just a second. I will say this really quick because we we will have an article I believe going up about this at Digital Trends. Amazon is uh, bidding right now for Fox Sports. Uh, 22 regional sports networks, which is mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. Disney has actually purchased them. The Justice Department told Disney, you can't have those. 
and um, yeah, and now uh, Amazon is making a bid for him. So that that article is going to go up. A lot to talk about with that, but I believe we have to go to break because we need to get to the kitchen right now to talk to Executive Chef Patrick McKee. You're going to do and some Patrick cooking. McKee. You're going to do some cooking, Patrick some McKee. Cooking? I'm not going to do any cooking. I'm no, cook. you're no. just going to watch Patrick I'll eat. do it. Yeah, I'll watch Patrick do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, I'm pretty good at that. I'll come and eat it for you. Then. All right, there we go. Well, yes, we will be doing that. So we're going to go live to the kitchen here in a minute and with Patrick McKee. So stay right here at Digital Trends Live. Give us all your comments, your questions, whatever you want to talk about. Thank you, Caleb Dennison. Thank you, Greg Nibbler. And we will be back in a minute with more Digital Trends Live. And we are back live here, Digital Trends Live, in the DT Kitchen. This is our first time actually shooting in the, in the DT Kitchen. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Again, Digital Trends Live here, live every day at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And in the Digital Trends Kitchen, I know since we are live, well, maybe I'll have to adjust my microphone just a little bit, but why don't we do this? Let's introduce my guest. It is Patrick McPhee, Executive Chef. Patrick McKee, excuse me. Yes. Patrick McKee, I'm getting some info here. Patrick McKee, uh, executive chef from Perlow. Correct. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us. So let's, Thanks for having me. Let's talk about, um, really quick, you know, let's talk about Perlow. Okay, great. Uh, we're located in the Beaumont neighborhood up on 46th and Fremont. Okay, here in Portland, uh, Oregon. Uh, here in Portland, Oregon. Um, we do live jazz on Friday and Saturday night as well. We're very uh, globally inspired. Uh, lots of uh, inspi inspiration from my mother from uh, Italy. Also from Southeast Asia, Japan, and of course, Portland, Oregon. That is a wide range of influences it is. on that. Like really quick, I want to talk about the jazz, because I know that's a big element it is. up for low of the restaurant. Right. So where does the jazz uh, influence come in? Um, the owners really wanted to have a venue after uh, Jimmy Max closed down. And nice. they wanted to have, uh, you know, and Portland has a wide range of really great artists that, are, uh, that live here. And they wanted to give them another venue to do it. And they also wanted to have a dinner house as well. So we're trying to do, uh, you know, dinner, and, really cool. dinner and a show and the same thing. And Jimmy Max was a really famous jazz restaurant here in Portland. And right. yeah, so that's great, you know, to try to pick that up. Um, let's talk about your influence. So you said, you know, you have all mm -hmm. these, these different influences coming into being an executive chef. When did you know this is something you wanted to do for a living? Uh, actually, I was working here in Portland and I was working at an old restaurant here called Zephyro, like way back in the day. And it was the first like big fine dining restaurant that was really bringing a lot of the food focus from around the country here. Mm -hmm. And it was there that I really excelled and I knew, uh, working with Chef Chris Israel, that I could do this and do this uh, for a living. And basically what he had told me when I was leaving him was go find the best chef that you could work with here. 
and I ended up with Vitaly Pele, and I was there for 10 years. Nice, that's a, that's a good way to start off. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so you learn from him, and you have you know, this, this influence from your childhood. You said your mother was a big influence? Oh, absolutely, huge influence on me. So did she do a lot of cooking in the house growing she up? She did, yeah, she and my grandmother both are, have tons of food memories. Uh, you know, Sunday dinner, for instance, was a big thing for our family. Nice. Uh, you didn't miss it, you know, when we were in high school, you know, it's like, I'm gonna go hang out with my girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. I had to bring my girlfriend to the house because it was Sunday night dinner. Everybody <laughs> gathered. It was always a time for us to kind of reflect on the week and talk about things that were going on in our lives. And, you know, sit down and like have my mom's spaghetti and meatballs or lasagna. I mean, I could go oh, on yeah. and on. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> there's something really important, I think, about that, about, you know, actually cooking a good meal and enjoying that with each other and Thanksgiving, obviously being tomorrow, you right. know, a big time for that. And I right. know today you wanted to cook something uh, extra special here that you brought in here to, uh, to DT. Well, yeah, for sure. My parents are actually here right now that came out from the East Coast. Nice. So uh, one of my, one yeah, of my things, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're watching, I'm not sure. Uh, one of my big things uh, is always a side dish. And I think that that's definitely a big trend that's going on in Thanksgiving world. Um, I like it, uh, you know, the turkey's the turkey or whatever, but it's like, for me, it's about doing creative side dishes that go along, yeah. whether you're doing a soup or whether you're doing stuffing or something, but this is, came directly from my mom, who used to make this crazy thing with bacon, green beans, some shallots, and some fried onions. It's very simple, but it's like, man, do it right, and gonna you're gonna say, kill it. I would really think of putting all of that together, but I mean, I like every one of them individually. Right. Yeah, and I've definitely got different memories of going out camping and watching her make this over a fire, you know, in a cast iron pan, or doing oh, okay. this. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, or doing this for uh, Thanksgiving as well. So now you've taken this on and you cook it uh, right. yourself. Um, so maybe we should walk through what it is that we have going. Sure. On. Well, I've got some stuff going over here, okay. so we can take a peek. So uh, slowly rendering some bacon, and I've got a little bit of shallot in here as well. So we've got the nice yeah, bacon, bacon fat and everything's, good. yeah, it smells good. I will good, say right? it smells very good in here right now. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to like this. Gotta love the bacon. <laughs> it looks awesome. Anyway, so all I'm going to really do, I turned it down a little bit while we were talking. Is so this, this is, are this like cubed bacon that you've got? Yeah, so it's uh, Newski's bacon I've got that I cubed. So, okay. and then just slowly rendered out. We want to keep that bacon fat in there. That's kind of one of the secrets to this whole thing. So Okay, so you want to, yeah, cook it yeah. in that. So, and then uh, all I did was uh, just took some green beans and I... Uh, blanched and just kind of cut them up a little bit so it'd be easy to use. And then we're just going to cook these in the uh, bacon fat as well here. Nice. So these are fresh green beans that you've got. you got the bacon right. fat. Yeah, How I long got... was the bacon fat cooking in there? Um, I cooked it in here for about five minutes. Okay. So I just do it over a medium heat, like a little bit low so you don't burn anything. Mm -hmm. Is your mom going to be okay with you giving out this recipe right now? Mom? I hope so. <laughs> this is a family secret that's... Well, you know, it's a funny story because for a long time she wouldn't give me the family marinara recipe because she thought I was going to change it. So Really? Yeah, and she had actually come out to uh, Paley's uh, with my dad when I was working there and she sent a thank you note to Vitaly and with the thank you note one year she actually gave him a recipe card with the family marinara recipe. She gave it to him and not She gave it to him <laughs> before she gave it to me. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, so you've got the bacon cooking in there right. in about five minutes. Just got to go in here so just everything is like nicely coated. Well. Yeah, so a little bit of shallot in there. Shallot. And then all I do is just a little bit of red wine vinegar. You can hear it kind of deglaze the pan. Oh, yeah. We'll let that come down a little bit. Provide a nice little uh, bite of acidity. It'll help. Uh, got a lot of uh, good things going on on the bottom of this pan. And then we're just going to finish with just a little bit of butter melted. Oh, yeah. So butter and the butter. The butter's always like butter a secret, and, isn't it? Butter and bacon. So, so you work on this, you cook uh, this up every year, or is this a year-round dish that you make? Uh, you could definitely do this year-round. Uh, summertime is always really good. I like to do uh, this same dish, but add, uh, you know, something like a cherry tomatoes or, you know, fresh chopped heirloom tomatoes as well in the summertime. Um, I was on a river trip a couple of years ago and did this, like, in the summer on the river. Like, same thing like my mom used to do. I like, love that over. idea that you can cook it outside. I mean, this yeah. does seem like it's a really transportable it's dish. It's definitely a very versatile thing and and the thing that I like about this to be honest is like I don't really care for the uh, green bean casserole dish that everybody serves for Thanksgiving. Okay, me too. So I, I didn't want to say anything. I'm like I'm normally not a green bean casserole. Well, right? you know, it's like the canned soup and everything. Exactly. It's kind of yeah. gross. So yeah. anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to finish this off. I'll just uh, plate it real quick. So anyway, we've got everything going here. This is so quick to make. Right, so once you got everything done, this is just a, and I find the two that it's just a real uh, crowd pleaser. Oh well. yeah, so. but see, this is perfect for me because I'm not an executive chef and I'm not that great at cooking, so which is why they usually don't <laughs> allow me to cook. Um, I bring the wine, but I think that uh, this is something even I could do. Right, so, yeah, I, super easy. Yeah. Just take the green beans and blanch mm -hmm. the green beans for a minute or two ahead of time. Just let them cool off. Make it easier to cook so you're not cooking them from raw. So, and then 
you know, you can serve them. The thing I like about these dishes is, the, you know, the handles are still not super hot, so you can just serve it right in here if you wanted right, to. Right, just put it straight out. Sure, but then, you know, see, we got that nice little thing going on down oh, there on the man, bottom. Oh, that looks good. Again, it smells amazing in here. I'm not, uh, actually, you know. Yeah, we're probably gonna be bringing in other people from Digital Trends in here in a second, I'm sure. Um, so, so you make this, you got the, the bacon, the butter, the shallot, the green beans, mm -hmm. and then um, what else, what else do we do from here? Super easy. So this is kind of where I came in a little bit. So I like to do a little bit of uh, fresh parsley leaf. Just add a little bit. I love cooking with fresh herbs. A lot of yeah. like fresh herbs, especially when you finish a dish, it'll really make it stand out. And then we have some uh, fried onions. So like the fried onions from the green bean casserole. Yep. Oh, here you go. Got them just like this. This is a much better way for that, <laughs> for to eat those with that. Right. And then uh, I like to finish everything with a little bit of salt. So we have uh, some nice uh, chef flake salt from Jacobson Salt Company, and I brought a little sneak surprise over. So what is, I, wait, what is the sneak surprise? This is smoked Jacobson salt. Can I try it? Yeah. Smoked salt. Okay, Let's yeah, give it that. I'm sorry, I know this is on camera, and I know I'm like eating salt right now, but it's, <laughs> I had to try it. Smoked salt. So what does the smoked salt bring to it that's different? Well, I think it just it helps enhance the smoky flavor that the bacon mm -hmm. is already bringing to it, and just kind of gives it a little topper at the very end. That just, is cool. just, just to make it pop. I mean, this is an amazing dish. So you just saw how we can cook this right here, um, right. just in the kitchen, like how quick that was done. What other recommendations do you have for people for, for Thanksgiving? Do you have general recommendations that you'd sell, like don't try to go outside of your comfort zone? Or Well, that's funny. I was just going to say that. Keep it simple. Yeah. You know, do the things you know. I think that one thing that you find with a lot of people is when they go outside of their comfort zone and try to create something that they're not comfortable with or not familiar with, that's when the screw-ups happen in the kitchen and you end up with... Burn yeah. chickens or right. half of your house burning down. Exactly. You know. Yeah, I was going to say the, the house is burning down. It seems to be a frequent one. Yes. Be careful when you're deep frying your turkeys, everybody. Yes, do not fry them when they are frozen. Don't do that. It's a bad <laughs> idea. Um, but uh, this is this is fantastic. So for Perlot, I wanted to bring that back to you. Do you guys do a Thanksgiving dinner or a Thanksgiving meal? We're closed for the day, so okay. give, give the crew a chance to kind of spend with their families. That's but great. We're, we're back in action on Friday. We have got music going on Friday and Saturday. Nice. So. And uh, the, uh, so the other two owners of uh, Perlow. Right. So the owners are uh, Eric Shinley uh -huh. and Casey O'Brien. Okay. And Eric Shinley's uh, ancestor was, his last name was Perlow, which is Okay, I was going to ask, like, how, yeah, where Perlow so, came from, what that meant. Right. So uh, his last name was Perlow. He came from France, came actually to California for the California Gold Rush, ended up actually in Portland. It was one of the first vegetable farmers in Portland at the Yankee. Interesting. Farm. So it just kind of ties in everything because one of my philosophies for being at Perlot as the chef there is to really focus on buying local uh, vegetables, uh -huh. local meat, you know, uh, local sustainable organic. You know, it sounds trite, but it's it's really important to no, support I, your local community. And I think that I, th I find that in a lot of um, you know a lot of different chefs that we talk to, like local is an important thing. Like wherever you are, the local ingredients right. seem to make the difference. Absolutely. In well, your the quality is going to be great. We have a oh. lot of really great local produce. Uh, the so wide, fresher, I would imagine. Fresher, the wide variety of things. You know, we have a lot of talented people. Uh, we work very closely with, for instance, the Side Yard Farm. Uh, Stacy Givens is, like, absolutely fantastic. She goes some really great product. We're really proud to be able to use it. Groundwork Organics is another one that's uh, available throughout the year for the most part. So this time of year, we're finding a lot of squash and a lot of things like that that we can get from them as well. That's cool. So each, and each region is probably different. Like, what would your recommendation be for somebody who wants to cook and go local? Like, where's, where's the best way to start? Because a lot of people, I mean, you just think, well, oh, you go to the big grocery store. And well, the Portland Farmer's Market, I think, is the best place to start. Is go. there, um, for like other regions too, are there other, like, like find the farmer's markets, is that the best way? I would say go? everywhere you go, finding the farmer's market is the best way to go. Yeah. I know one of the greatest farmer's markets I've been to in uh, New York City was the Union Square Farmer's Market. Nice. So, so again, and what would you call this? Uh, I would call Do you this. Have a name for it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like trying to think of a fancy name there. Uh, <laughs> it would be just my mom's green bean uh, side dish. I think. I think that's perfect right there. I mean, so. your mom would probably be mad if you named it something else anyway. I think so. Yeah. So, so see, there we go, mom. I didn't change it too much. <laughs> you did it right. Well, again, Patrick McKee down at Perlo, and Patrick, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having for me. Joining this us for fun. this, I think we're actually going to be trying this here in just a little bit. I'm not going to torture you with me eating it right on camera yet, uh, but we're going to go back to the studio here after just a quick break. We're going to be talking to Franco with the Relief app, talking about Relief and everything they're doing to help people uh, decide what marijuana works for them. So we're going to be discussing that here in just a second. Uh, back with more Digital Trends Live.
and the magic of that, we are back in the studio right now, back here with more Digital Trends Live. And now we are going to be joined by Franco Rockelman to talk about relief. Franco, I believe you're on the line right now. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Doing great. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. You know, I uh, wanted to talk about relief. I was reading up on it beforehand. I'm actually really impressed with what it is that you're trying to do. And I thought maybe the, the, probably the best way to explain to everyone is about what your app is and uh, have you, have you kind of walk us through what it is that you do. Okay, sure. So Relief is a cannabis journal for medical patients. So uh, back in 2014, uh, my mom got sick. Um, she, when I was growing up, she always had an external condition. It's called psoriasis. Um, and that condition apparently can get into your joints and, and it's a, you know, it's a chronic pain condition that leads to immobility and some other things. Um, so the app was made uh, originally to help her uh, approach cannabis. Um, you know, I had seen some things online about how cannabis could be, uh, you know, maybe helpful for her. And for that condition, it's, it's just one of those conditions that has a lot of experimental medications. Um, yeah. So uh, at first she said, you know, no way, you know, I'm not breaking my streak was uh, her, uh, <laughs> what she exactly said, which I thought it was funny, but it also, it, it shows you how unapproachable it can be, you know, for some people to, you know, take that leap into this, you know, newly uh, accepted, you know, form of medicine. I, I think that's you know, a really good point. Yeah, just, uh, just to, touch on that for a second because you know I know also you know we probably all do know people who have dealt with chronic pain or different conditions and because this has gone from you know just a few years ago to where it was completely taboo really I mean you know you're buying from some guy in a van to now you can have stores in so many different places in so many different states and it's becoming more and more accepted um, that this is an actual treatment that can actually help people but it's it's an intimidating thing to get into it's, an, right. I would imagine, an intimidating thing to, especially for some people to make that switch into that kind of mind frame that this is, this is something that can help relieve your pain or help relieve your symptoms. Um, so Correct. I think that's very cool what you're doing with this. Um, so you, you created this app for your mom and then where do you, where do you go from there? Uh, did, mm -hmm. she, did she start using it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, when she, uh, you know, at first she said, you know, I don't want, I don't want to try that. You know, I'm mm -hmm. going to try other things until I run out of options. Well, yeah. eventually she ran out of options. Um, and at that time, you know, it was 2014, so it was a number of years ago. Um, you know, Leafly was really the only kind of database to use to help yourself. Um, and we went with, you know, what was on there. Uh, you know, it said, you know, go try Master Kush because that's going to be the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that and that didn't work. She almost stayed up all night, and her pain got a little bit worse. You know, I think it you know made her think more about her pain. But re regardless, it right you know, that's not that's not working. Yeah, it wasn't working um, out for her for that one for for sure. Yeah, and so when you think about that, you know, a it'd be nice to have a trusted resource where you go to this place and you can trust that what you're going to get back is is, is going to have a good chance of working for you. Um, but b you know after doing more you know research, you know you can tell that it, it's not just about you know, strains, it's more local than that, you know, strains, you know, it, it's a plant. So it wants to evolve and shift. It has uh, many different ways that it, it can, you know, express itself, you know, the soil, the water, the light. Um, so master Kush isn't going to be the same every time. And, you know, that's one of some of the things that we learned. So, um, you know, what we did is put together an app where you could track exactly what you took, the testing uh, for that cannabis item, and then how it alleviated or didn't alleviate up to four symptoms at the same time over a single session. Um, so that for a single patient, you can start creating real records over what's working and what's not, and you can use that to discuss with your, your blood tender, your doctor, your nurse. Um, but then on a, on, a, on a bigger scale, we can take that data and put it together to help people work together when they're trying to solve the same things. Uh, it seemed like people were operating kind of in a silo. That's, that's interesting. So you can take the info, like you're, say somebody's trying these different things, they enter it into the app. We were just taking a look too at the, um, I think we got the video playing right now, just showcasing some of the highlights of the app. So you try it, you enter in how you felt about it, great, bad, whatever, whatever it is. And then you can see that data yourself. But then you said, you're mentioning the, this kind of group idea so you can share the data. Is that how it would work? Mm -hmm. Right. So right now we work universities, um, both nationally and internationally, to, to look at the data we collect and, mm -hmm. and publish uh, studies. So we've had two published this year with uh, New Mexico, University of New Mexico, on um, insomnia. 
and then a broader one looking at the 27 at that time it was 27 symptoms that we track mm -hmm. look at how cannabis affected those and um we use the international pain scale because that's a very recognized measure and yeah. uh you know across symptoms the average uh drop in symptom level was anywhere between 2.8 to 4.6 um, for any of those symptoms. So that's pretty great, you know, for a, for a new medicine for, that people could take. Yeah, and, and when did you launch this app? Uh, it was launched mid-2016. Okay, so you've had a little bit of time to gather that data, and I think, you know, just talking about that, sharing that data, I think is, is very important. You know, this is mm -hmm. kind of a new field for people mm -hmm. to get this kind of information. So they can enter it in. Um, what are some other, some other applications that they can use, some other applications for the app? Mm -hmm. So right now, we, like I said, we work with uh, universities to produce uh, findings. We have another paper coming out soon showing the importance of THC in combination with CBD and how those two things relate. Um, you know, CBD is, um, has a lot of hype right now. A lot of people are really excited about it. And so kind of shifting away from thinking about THC, but we're finding that THC is actually a really important part of that medical uh, you know, puzzle. Um, so that's about to come out. And in uh, 2019, we're going to be producing uh, or releasing some features that help drive patients to effective medicine. That's that's the way I'd put it. You know, um, I, I subscribe to a lot of dispensary newsletters today mm -hmm. just to see how they present themselves. What are they trying to push to their patients? Um, and, and in a lot of places, it's 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 a bidding war. You know, what's the where's the cheapest ounce or the cheapest cannabis or or something like that. And what what we'd like to do is kind of elevate that. So. For some, yes, you could go find that cheapest thing or the best deal, let's say. Right. But, but I think there's a lot of patients that actually want to find effective medicine, and, and that price isn't actually the top priority, you know? So by helping gather data on what's working for different symptom types and ailments, uh, you know, we could point people to where they can find uh, medicine around them or cannabis around them that's local that's proving to be helpful for people just like them. So like other people with psoriasis in your area are trying right. this at this location. Right. Exactly. Um, how do you curate the data just on the different kinds? Because I mean, like you said, there's so many different strains and types of marijuana or, cross, or cannabis or cross strains with THC and CBD. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm even confusing myself just bringing up all these different <laughs> things, you know? I mean, it is, it, there's a lot to learn on that. How do you guys curate the data for the app with that? Mm -hmm. So we, we capture as much or as little as you have. And, uh, you know, our philosophy there is we want to help as many people as possible. And if you have, um, you know, Crohn's or some MS or some, something that you're really trying to work through and you happen to get cannabis and you don't know that much about it, if, if you have enough of it that, that you can work through and see how it works for you and how much you should take and when you should take it and all of that without knowing that much about it, you know, that's still great. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're in a state that has a lot of, uh, you know, testing regulations and you can know more about what you're taking, then we want to allow you to put in as much of that as you can, you know, from who produced it, the batch number, when was it harvested, uh, full cannabinoid profiles, uh, terpene profiles. So, so basically we catch, we catch as little or as much as you want to give. And then we're just smart on the research side to, you know, partition that stuff uh, appropriately to come to the right findings. That's really cool. I like the idea that somebody can sh share the level that they feel comfortable with, you know, yeah. of that data. Because, you know, like you said, for some people, it still is. It's a new, it's a, a new way of thinking, of changing the mind frame about cannabis. You know, what maybe, especially maybe older generations, what you were taught growing up, um, and now switching that mind frame. And I feel like you know what you're doing is really, really valuable. I really do uh, appreciate what you're doing there because you know people in pain they need help. And uh, right. it sounds like you're, you're really trying to take a step there to help, uh, help solve some of those issues. So I want to thank you so much. Uh, where's the best place for people to download the app? Just the general app stores or go to the website? Yeah, yeah if you search for Relief, R-E-L-E-A-F, on the uh, iOS or Android app stores, you can, you can find us there. And it's free for patients, of course. So. Fantastic. Well, Franco, thank you so much for joining us today and talking about this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Fantastic. So there we go here on Digital Trends Live, uh, talking about the Relief app. And we have more for you right now. So again, I do want to emphasize that we are live. We're broadcasting live. We're live on Twitch, Periscope, YouTube, and Facebook, which means you can drop your comments and your questions in there into the chat. And I'll say this. If you are a tech fan, which you probably are if you're watching this show, you know that this weekend, I guess you don't even need to be a tech fan, but especially if you're a tech fan, this upcoming weekend is huge because it's Black Friday. And here at Digital Trends, we have an entire 
teams, basically the entire company is working on finding the best deals for you for uh, what's going on for Black Friday. And I'm joined now by Oilong Maui. Hello. Hello. Hello, Oilong. So you have been working tirelessly, I know, <laughs> because I'm here at Digital Trends every day and I see your team is working overtime, mm -hmm. trying always to find- Always a frenzy. Always, yeah, yeah. It's always a frenzy over there. <laughs> so let's talk about this just from the start. Um, you wanted to give us some, maybe some tips and tricks mm -hmm. that we can walk through with Black Friday. Maybe the traditional question is, you know, do you still have to go into the store and walk in, you know, and be one of the people that get, you know, maybe trampled mm -hmm. uh, to get the deals? You know, the retailers like to like get you in the door and that's why they have things like door, deal door busters and stuff like that. And there'll be deals that you can only get in store However, um, let's just, uh, I think your chain's hitting the mic just a little bit oh, there. Okay. Sorry. It's <laughs> See, this is the thing, though, about being live, you know? And uh, again, thank you to Oil Long for taking some time to come in here because I know, like you said, you're busy. Yep, boom, nailed it. There we go. <laughs> well, like I was saying, um, they do offer some deals that you can only get in store, but the real action is online. You know, there mm -hmm. are stuff that you can't get a promo code and you go to checkout and use that. So I would say that the best way to get all these deals is to come to our site where we went through all of the deals that you could possibly ever dream of and not dream of and pick out <laughs> the ones that are really worth it. I imagine that's quite the task to figure out which ones are actually worth it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, thankfully, it's not just us. We reach out to our in-house experts, you know, all of yeah. the, like Caleb and Ryan and Kim and everybody who know these products. So they can be like, no, that's not a good deal or that's a crappy model. Don't get that one. This is the one you want. Yeah, and that's important because it is hard to see because sometimes, and you know, in the frenzy of like Cyber Monday and Black Friday, you're just like, oh my God, that's $100. Mm -hmm. I got to buy that. Yeah. But really it's not even worth $100, you exactly. know? Exactly. So yeah, finding those deals is important. So what time do the deals start showing up? Um, I think you and everybody else have noticed that Black Friday seems to start earlier yeah, and earlier, kinda. and Cyber Monday seems to go later and later. Um, so right now, you, there are already deals live that you can get, which we've already dropped on the site as well, from like Target to Walmart to Best Buy, Amazon. Um, but the real deals and steals will definitely start on Friday. Okay, so starting on Friday, that's going to be the time to actually mm -hmm. see the... Or like room. Thursday midnight, you know, okay. if you're at home. You know, yeah, yeah, staying up. Stay home. Stay home, stay home. So, <laughs> so the deals will start showing up there. And again, digitaltrends.com, and I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. We have so many different uh, categories and sites that you can check out and different things, you know, when it comes to electronics or... I don't know, there's just, there's a lot that's mm -hmm. on there mm -hmm. and uh, to kind of go through. So... Um, let me ask this, as far as like Black Friday and Cyber Monday, a big one, when's the best time for somebody looking for a deal? Would it, would it be better to just buy something on Black Friday or wait till Cyber Monday or, you know? Yeah, that's a really tricky question. Yeah. Um, I have seen that Cyber Monday has like just a little bit of a better deal. Um, I can't say any specifics, but like okay. I've seen something like the difference will just be like 10 or $15. So if that really matters to you, you can try and wait. But like with really big ticket items like the premium TVs that are really like have a good deal right now, you mm -hmm. risk them selling out because there aren't that many. Yeah. Um, so it's really kind of up to you if you want like the good deal or if you want to wait for maybe a better deal. Gotcha. So you could save 10 bucks, but you may be out of luck. Yeah, on, exactly. On it when it comes down to it. And mm -hmm. there are some really good deals on televisions. And we've got actually, well, I guess one of the other things I wanted to ask too is um, as far as what, what companies should you look for like should you go to like a company's website or should you go to a retailer's website and obviously this is all at digital trends mm -hmm. is where we can parse you out to that but i mean what's what is the the primary way that you um i will way? say like the bigger major retailers can offer more um better value overall like uh -huh. with free shipping or free express shipping or um, especially like with Apple, they're known for not discounting their products directly. Yeah. So if you want Apple products, you're going to have to go to Best Buy or Walmart. Um, so things like that, you definitely want to we go to the retailers for. We were talking about that earlier, that Apple is going to have some deals. Yeah, some really good it deals. might change this year. We'll see. We don't know until they drop it on yeah. Friday. Yeah, that's, see, that's mm -hmm. the crazy thing. So just behind the scenes for you. So since you know, you've know you curated, we've got all the guides that are at the website. Again, mm -hmm. digitaltens.com. Go there for whatever kind of category you're looking for. We've got an article on the best ways to buy, the tips, the tricks, everything that you need to know. Um, but for you, so when it comes to like midnight on Thursday, it's <laughs> yeah. like the entire team just sitting there. Everybody's on a different website, like trying to get those deals. Um, we're trying not to work on midnight. <laughs> I will say that. Um, Good. But 
there are some stuff that we can pre-schedule and there's stuff like we don't know as much mm -hmm. as like the readers don't know. Right. So um, we're kind of just in it with everybody. Yeah. But that's why uh, digitaltrends.com is the best place to go <laughs> to find these. So let's talk about maybe just a couple of specific deals that you've mm -hmm. seen that maybe we could uh, <laughs> Okay, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, it's gonna be really nerdy, but I have this toothbrush and it's the Oral-B. I can't remember the model, but I know I gave it to you. No, we were talking yesterday, yeah. it's just like, no, I really wanna talk about this toothbrush. Yeah, um, it's amazing. And the reason why I got it was my dental hygienist was like, yo, like you need to upgrade yourself. <laughs> and she was like, that's you can specific. get- That's that's exactly yeah, it. You can get the like baseline, yo. cheapest, like just <laughs> as long as it sits on a charging stand that's plugged in, it's like the most powerful that you could get. So that one- The Oral-B, 1,000 cross-action electric go. toothbrush. Sorry, I didn't memorize that. I had to read nice. it uh, So it's uh, $40. Yeah, it was it 65 and it's $40 right now. And look at that lady. She it's, is happy. Look how happy teeth. she looks. Look, She's like, right look there. at my teeth. Right there. Exactly. So, yeah. so highly recommend. The Oral-B 1000 cross action mm -hmm. electric toothbrush and then um, let's talk about this next one here which this is something I actually I mean not that I the toothbrush looks great <laughs> but the next one actually might be the thing that I'm going to buy. And this is the robot is vacuum the, right? Yeah, the robot vacuum. Yeah. Um, robot these vacuum. are very very popular right now. I mean they've been popular. Um, and this is about $200 off. Yeah, so you which can is get it. Huge. Yeah, that's that's over 50%. That's crazy. Yeah. And so what's cool about these things is um, most of them, like, is, they let them run around your house for a little bit, and they get to like know your house, and they kind of develop their own path. That's what that's what I kind of like about it, just the fact that you can set it there, and then you know it's kind mm -hmm. of good for being lazy too. Because <laughs> it's just my Except when it gets caught in a rug, you gotta like be careful. <laughs> and then there's a picture of it on a rug. And so there, okay. yep, it's trying getting caught on a rug. Yeah. So that's the iRobot Roomba 675 Wi-Fi robot vacuum. Exactly. Um, which again, you can see at digitaltrends.com. We probably even have a review of it on there, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, the next one. This is another one that I feel like, I, now I'm just realizing I want to buy everything that's on here. Uh, but nonetheless, this next one, the televisions. Yes. Huge. Um, so this one's actually pretty, it was pretty affordable already. Mm -hmm. um, but so now it's just being discounted to like 300 down from four. And this is the Toshiba 50 inch 4K Ultra HD Smart LED TV HDR Fire TV Edition. Wow. Yeah, so I said it's jam packed. It's one breath. Um, so, what's cool about the smart TVs is that they're already integrated with all the apps, so you don't need like a Roku or like any other streamer. Um, not knocking it, because I have one, so that's totally fine. Yeah. But if you didn't want to have like all these extra hookups, you can right. get this, and it's also the Fire TV Edition, so, you know, yeah, you dropping got it down like to two, like 200, 300 bucks for a TV. With yeah, all it was that, three ninety nine. Now it's two ninety nine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I want that. And if it's on our page, like you know, Caleb looked at it and was like, "This is a good deal." That's the that's so, the other thing. Yeah, but yeah. with all of our deals, like we have entire editorial sections who spend all their time curating. You know, I really do want to emphasize <laughs> that. Like, no, this is a good one. This is a good deal. Mm -hmm. So if the, if you get the seal of approval from them on top of everything else, you know, you're getting a good deal. And the last thing we wanted to bring up here with your uh, with some of your specials, mm -hmm. the ones that you wanted to have. Um, I, this is probably like a personal one, but like who doesn't get excited about discounts at Nike? Um, so this one actually is a pre-Black Friday um, special. So it's going on until the 22nd, so tomorrow. Okay. Um, and if you enter uh, promo code THANKS, um, you get 20% off select styles. Um, and you can find that on the manual. They're covering all the fashion and like beauty and grooming t type stuff. Um, and it's just, it's really great. I already, like I have like a list of shoes that I'm like, maybe these. That you've set yeah. out. How yeah. many are you going to buy? I'll, I'll probably limit myself to like one or yeah, two. Yeah, you have to put like a cap on it. Yeah. So these are really, really, like I'm sure you've seen people with these everywhere. Mm -hmm. These are the Vapor Max Airs. And so these um, are down to like, what is it, 130? I don't even know if I have the price on here, but it's, I might not yeah. have. But it's like their original price are like 180 and you can get them for like 130, depending on which model and which shoe. That's a huge, it's yeah, huge. that's a huge deal. Yeah. So you can check out all of those, and that was the other one, the Air Max, 90, mm -hmm. Air Max 97 mm -hmm. too. So you can check out all of those at Digital Trends. And again, what's the best, what's, just go to digitaltrends.com. Yeah. Yeah, and take a look. Uh -huh. And then also, you wanna stop by the manual too if you're looking for anything fashion-wise, because mm -hmm. they're covering all of that. Sportswear, style, uh, shoes, 
the manual Beauty grooming and the manual.com is a brother set of digital mm -hmm. trends yeah so that's a whole other category like basically whatever you're thinking about buying between digital trends and the manual.com we've Think got it covered it. Mm -hmm. yeah it's all on there and i do want to say this too so black friday of course huge deals but we did talk about cyber monday and on monday here for digital trends live we're doing a special three hour show where we're going to have editors from each department come in and talk about the products that they're seeing for that and for monday's show this is what you really need to mark down. And you need to remember this, just hop in here at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, for the three-hour show, because throughout that show, we're gonna be giving away a Samsung 65-inch flat UHD 8-series smart TV. Oh. That is a $1,300 television that we're gonna be giving away on Cyber Monday here as part of Digital Trends Live. So stay tuned for that. Be here, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Hop right in here for that. Well, well thank you so much for hopping in here and appreciate it, all the hard work that you're doing. So you can check that out, Digital Trends Black Friday specials. We're gonna go to a quick break and then we're gonna head back to the kitchen and talk to Patrick McKee. I believe everybody's going to be trying the dish. Mm. So there's probably not any left for me by the time I get there. But nonetheless, we'll be back here in just a minute with more Digital Trends Live. Back here in the Digital Trends kitchen, wrapping up today's show. I want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in. We've got, uh, we've got the food here in front of us. We've got the, everybody's eating, everybody's getting to enjoy it. I don't know if you want to hear me eat on camera, but you know, maybe we can make that happen. Um, again, Patrick, thank you so much for hopping in here today. Hey, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. This, I'm, I am going to make this actually, so maybe my family will finally eat something that I make. Um, we'll see what that happens. I'll bring extra wine in case I screw it up. Uh, but again, Patrick, maybe just a, a recap for everybody. So Perlo, um, what's what's the best Perlo, uh, place to go? I know you've got the websites. Right, uh, PerloPDX.com. We're at 4605 Northeast Fremont in the Beaumont neighborhood. Again, uh, Saturday, Sunday, we have the jazz brunch. And then Friday, Saturday night, we have live jazz. Fantastic. Regular dinner, uh, Tuesday through Saturday night. Nice. So, so get to Portland. Stuff. If you're not in Portland, come to Portland. Check out Perlo and stop right. by with uh, Patrick. Well, all right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, how is it? It is amazing. It is. By really the way, tasty. behind the scenes, this is Jake. So if you hear Jake's name on the show, 
Jake's the producer, so now we get to see Jake here on camera. And Jean hopping in here to eat here at Digital Trends in our kitchen. Uh, all right, I think that's, I gotta wrap it up because I wanna eat. So um, <laughs> thanks everyone for tuning in. Again, back live on Monday for Cyber Monday with our three hour special, giving away that Samsung television. So hop along for that, stay on for that. And we've got our Black Friday deals. You can check out digitaltrends.com. Thanks to Caleb for hopping in. Thanks to Oilong, thanks to Franco from Relief, and of course, Patrick from Perlo. And uh, that's Absolutely. it for me. I'm Greg Nibbler. Have a great Thanksgiving, and we will talk to you on Monday with more Digital Trends Live.